I think the future is restorative accountability. It's accountability that isn't just taking accountability, but also creating restoration. For sexual assault, making an intentional effort to unlearn whatever systems that helped you to think or believe that what you did was okay, and to teach others to stop it from continuing, to stop the cycle from continuing. I do think that as somebody with a voice, that can be heard in a platform that can be seen. It is important to engage in activism and to engage in social politics that are authentic to who you are and authentic to the things that you care about. And sort of historically, I suppose what Denim Day is based on, a woman taking the blame for an action that was completely out of her control, right? And sort of, again, the government going in on, well, how can we continue to control women's bodies versus potentially teaching uh, perpetrators to re-navigate their aggression. No matter what a survivor wears, does, or says, there's a way that we, we shame them and we name them complicit in their own victimization. This is an opportunity for us to reflect about how we have inculcated a world where survivors won't speak up. And it's hard for people like myself, right, who haven't been survivors of sexual harassment or sexual assault to empathize in, in any real way. What I love about the work that you all are doing is you're taking an asset focus and not a deficit focus. And that's what makes someone like me excited to know that I'm not being a part of something that is just helping the survivors, but it's also helping us think more emotionally about what it means to be in solidarity. Our Denim Day program for Sexual Assault Awareness Month has, has been an inspiration to collaborate on, and it really does include so many layers of advocacy. The denim used for the collection was painted by young survivors of labor trafficking in Ghana through our empowerment initiatives and skills training with challenging heights. The students that we work with at the High School of Fashion Industries through Steps to End Family Violence and the Relationship Abuse Prevention Program are donating their time to create this couture collection with Celestino Couture and they want to use their creative voices to advocate for survivors. It's a multifaceted project. The students are thrilled to be able to use fashion to be able to send a message and to be able to wear something about a topic that is so crucial, so relevant, and after 20 years of working in schools, which is coming to the forefront. So I'm so glad and really gratified and really honored to be working again with Beauty for Freedom and Celestino and all of the, the myriad of, of designers and artists who are helping elevate the voices of so many in something so beautiful and so tangible. It is um, such an honor for me to be part of the Beauty for Freedom Sexual Assault Awareness Month campaign. It means so much to me because I think it's just time for us to take accountability, to empower those who have been affected. Coming from the fashion industry, I think sexual violence, sexual assault is like such a normal thing. That sounds terrible because there is a very fine line of, oh, this is still okay that he touched me there or am I being paranoid? That was my case. Denim Day, the story is astonishing. I personally can relate to the story myself because when it happened to me when I was a kid, it, I had jeans on. Uh, the guy uh, struggled with taking my jeans off. And jeans in Russia at the time was like a novelty, but it was very confusing for him. So I had to unopen it. So it's also part of me also dragged that as a guilt. Like I did it. I mean, I technically unzipped my jeans, right? So things like that, it's just, ugh, 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 sorry. It's just good that we can talk about it.